In terms of FASB, this is one that I do want to bring up. So, you know, numbers are being thrown around with all these fair value accounting rules and are they going to get included, this, that, and the next thing. What's the S&P 500 committee going to do? Um, and to be clear, right, so with the FASB fair value accounting rules is now the price of Bitcoin when it's acquired by MicroStrategy is marked at its fair value during acquisition. And then at the end of the quarter, so this is inter-quarter behavior. So at the end of the quarter, the price of that uh, Bitcoin is then uh, recorded at its fair value. And so that delta there from the big purchase price to the finished price during that quarter does count towards their, um, their earnings. Similarly, the price of the Bitcoin they hold is recorded at the beginning of the quarter and any sort of price appreciation or you know, depreciation is recorded as earnings on their um, income statement. And so when you, I have a table that I will share in this post that kind of shows the calculations I did for um, both the Bitcoin held at the start of Q1 2025 and the Bitcoins that were put on the balance sheet during Q1 2025. And the number I get for erasing you know, the prior three negative earnings, uh, for erasing the prior three quarters of negative earnings and having a positive EPS during this fourth quarter in the you know, trailing four quarters of earnings for S&P 500 inclusion is 97,000K uh, Bitcoin. 97,000, I think 69, uh, $97,069 per Bitcoin. So are we going to get there? I don't know. I don't know. And if we're close, you know, I'm going to have to refine those calculations and make sure I'm, I'm on the nose because we have to know, we have to know whether or not they're going to make this inclusion, right? So 100 is a safe bet. If we're at 100K in two weeks, you know, that's great. Now, that's not the full story, right? We, the inclusion dates are rolling throughout the year. So let's go over that first. There's a, what are the, all the dates for inclusion this year? June 20th is the third Friday in June. That's the first inclusion date on the horizon, right? That's the rebalance and inclusion for S&P 500. Uh, for new companies. Now, September 19th is the next, and December 19th is the next, is the third one of the year, the fourth one of the year. And any of those dates are viable, right? And MicroStrategy is just being, you know, the way it's positioned with its negative EPS. All it has to do is have a large enough BTC gain uh, to erase the prior three quarters of earnings and uh, make, you know, make all the trailing four quarters positive, which could happen, you know, this quarter. It may not. If it happens next quarter, all they've done is qualified themselves for the September 19th inclusion. And um, so if this quarter's earning criteria isn't hit based on the BTC price, then the next inclusion date we'll be looking at is September 19th. Now, the announcement for the inclusion typically happens one to two weeks prior to the actual inclusion, and that's announced by the S&P 500 committee um, you know, leading up to this sort of announcement date. It's usually one to two weeks. So when would inclusion be announced if we qualify? So if, you know, the Bitcoin price is sufficient this quarter, then it would be sometime, it would probably be June 6th or June 11th, it would be announced. Um, and then similarly, if in September, September 5th or uh, September 12th. Now, December 19th is also viable. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I think what's interesting about this kind of setup here is Bitcoin's trading super low, right? Bitcoin's trading very, very low. And, um, you know, we're expecting a move upwards. It isn't make or break this quarter. You know, we could do it the following quarter. We could do it even the, the following quarter, right? As long as Bitcoin keeps moving in the right direction. So, I, you know, I was very anxious about this quarter, uh, but it doesn't have to be. It does not have to be. Uh, it can be, you know, anytime in the future. Now, what does that lead me to? The conclusion I draw from that, though, is that you got to be sh you got to be sharp. You got to be careful. I originally was kind of betting the farm on this quarter inclusion. I didn't think we'd hit eighty four like Josh. I thought we were going to start moving higher end of February. So I was totally wrong, right? So I had a ton of June calls. I had a ton of June calls, and I had to roll them back to September, right? I have these June calls. And I was sweating. I was sweating. The price was dropping, whatever. I rolled it back to, to September because I really, really, really want to hit this inclusion if it does happen or the run-up uh, with the maximum amount of leverage I can stomach. And But I need to preserve the capital. You need to preserve the capital and you need to get this right. And so for me, I've rolled those back to September. 
you know, I'm kind of out of this sort of uh, theta decay strike zone. The thing with the Junes is, you know, you're now within 120 days um, of expiration. I think it's a April, May, you, 90 days of expiration. So you got to be you got to be careful there. They're going to be a huge payoff if we do get in that inclusion. Um, but the September's will as well. So you know, I tried to I try to keep my option expirations far into the future unless they're deep in the money. That's always how I do it. Um, because I don't mind, you know, missing a little bit of upside as long as I'm, you know, leverage exposure, I'm leveraged exposed long, um, you know, over this kind of time horizon. So that's where I'm at. That's how things are going. I think the MSTR True North guys, we're trying to ramp up content. We're trying to make things happen. I know I've been in a bit of a hibernation slump, but, uh, you know, I'm back in the game. Josh has been crushing it. Um, you know, Jeff and Ben have been crushing it. So uh, looking forward to the next. Yeah, so I'm looking super looking forward to the next couple months. Hopefully you'll get to see us at some events and uh, we'll talk soon.